As huge lovers of Steven Universe, exhausted by the bare bone t-shirt designs you find in stores, we put out designs inspired by the series. Let's say you want to wrap your favorite diamond, or don your new favorite catchphrase, we got you covered. Consider swinging by our Teespring store. Link in the description. Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm Monstrick Vox, and recently I shared my thoughts on why Pink Diamond's physical appearance does not reflect the appearance in her mural. To briefly recap, my personal take is that it's possible that Pink could have quote unquote aged over time, similar to Steven, resulting in her changing in scale and physical attributes. I also threw out other possibilities that's been floating around through the internet. Like Amethyst masquerading as Jasper, Pink Diamond shifted into a larger form that she had to maintain in the general public of her court. Maybe at one point Pink Diamond poofed and adopted the look that appears in her mural when she reformed. Yet, there was one scenario that flew under my radar until that episode went up. One that really caught my eye and I found myself really fascinated with and would love to give my own take on. That scenario is one where Pink Diamond's ultra height and appearance was the work of Lemonhancers. While this will be my own thoughts, I still want to make it very clear this was an idea presented to me through comments, tweets, messages, so on and so forth. It's one of those rare instances where a concept has been requested to be discussed a handful of times, and after giving it thought, I fell in love with it. I'm just shedding light and expanding on a pre-existing idea. So without further ado, let's dive in, and I think the best place to start is a briefing on what Lemon Hancers are since it's been a little while since they popped up in the show. Making their debut and hiding in plain sight in episode 36, Lemon Hancers have had two significant roles in the franchise so far, equipped onto our paradigm at the time of her allegiance still being a homeworld loyalist, and more recently was donned by the antagonist at Square Dot in the level 2 canon video game Save the Light. On a surface level, the name says it all. Lemon Hancers act as to increase or enhance a gem's arms and legs, which briefly I want to shout out all the pre-catch and release theories for seeing Paradox actually being small. It was such a shock watching it all come to fruition on a Thursday evening. I'll never forget the moment Paradox reformed as a shorty. Yet, when you really think about it, the concept of Lemon Hancers are absolutely genius. They're utilized in Era 2 as compensation for gems who lack abilities assumably Era 1 gems possess. This creates endless possibilities. We haven't seen the full potential of Lemon Hancers, but let's just look what Paradox has done with them so far. Her arms can produce a beam that levitate objects and doubles as a plasma cannon. The fingers can form and act as a universal remote control panel to a multitude of accessories. Log dates, gem warships, Robinoids, and I imagine that's just scratching the surface. It's also important to note Paradox Lemon Hancers was able to disperse electricity and even act as a method of transportation, taking the form of a helicopter. The feet of Paradox Lemon Hancers also enabled her to run on walls, and for those in case emergency situations, she could eject them at will. These are the Lemon Hancers of just a single cut of gem in Era 2 under our particular Diamond's Court. Yes, I like to believe Paradox serving Yellow Diamond has a direct influence on her Lemon Hancers. Yellow Diamond has demonstrated electric-based elemental powers in the past, very similar to the electric shocks and plasma blasts we've listed off. Paradise Lemon Hancers, while not vast, definitely aided her to get the job done in her task. What about other gems? Under other courts? Do Era 2 court soldiers have Lemon Hancers with features exclusive to them that boost their performance in combat to put them on par with the finest of Era 1 soldiers? Do they have fire-based abilities similar to the court soldiers we've seen prior? Should an Era 2 gem serve under Blue Diamond? Do their Lemon Hancers skew towards more ice or water-based abilities or produce a substance that mimics water and ice? Could the levitation allow them to manipulate water similar to our Lapis Lazuli? Hell, are Era 2 Lapis Lazulis as small as Peridot? needing Lemon Hancers specific to terraforming. These are questions that legitimately fascinate me, and I hope that as we explore more of Hormo society, we get answers to them. Theoretically, Homero could produce absolutely barebone gems, with little to no abilities, and equip them with Lemon Hancers tailored to the needs required to perform their job. No need to birth gems with weapons when their Lemon Hancers can do the trick. With Lemon Hancers, Homero could get more and more gem soldiers that are quote unquote perfect, gems that mimic Jasper, that are flawless through technology. Just imagine a future scenario on the show where the gems had to fight an Era 2 that can form their fingers into a whip or gauntlets. I'd be jaw-dropped. There's also the question if the Aquamarine we met 
is an error one or error two. Because if she's a former, it indicates the levitating tractor beams were based off her wand, taking note of the best features in error one gem accessories. If it's the latter, it means that every error two gem would be given limit enhancers, although that's pretty obvious. It does mean they are equipped with accessories similar to the enhancers. That homeworld feels would aim them well in missions. Since we never saw Aquamarine summon her weapon, yet Pearl and Garnet were fearful, and she had extensive knowledge of both Pink Diamond and the Gem War, it could go either way. Perhaps some gems closer to the diamonds, but made in Error 2, are briefed in onto the history of Pink Diamond, of the Gem War. Side note, who's the gem responsible for drafting up and brainstorming all these new inventions? While the diamonds may request production on these gadgets, who's pitching it to them? Who's overseeing development? I feel like with what we do know about gem kind and its society, there definitely has to be at least one or two cut of gem dedicated to the technological advancements. We'll find out in Season 25, I'm sure. So. What does all that have to do with the concept of Pink Diamond sporting the Enhancers? Well, two reasons. Not all the abilities Paradox Enhancers sport are necessary for a Diamond. If that was the case, Pink would have came across as a pale imitation of Yellow Diamond, which I don't think either of the two would have wanted. So, it's important to question if variations of the Enhancers exist, because it allows us to speculate and draw a conclusion on what Pink could have been, should there be weight to this theory. Not to knock Homeworld, but again, the concept of Limit Enhancers are true truly ingenious. While a resource crisis is pretty troubling, I feel like the advent of an invention would emerge from an urgent, higher-up need. Error 2 appears to have been taking a step back to see what worked and what failed prior, taking note of the best of Error 1 and cranking it up to a 10. That's not to say the enhancers weren't tweaked and perfected going into Error 2, but I have a hunch they were indeed carry over and refined, as opposed to being a product of the time. Perry's enhancers seem to be too intricate to be a first-time rodeo. Speaking of Error 2, there's also the notion that Pink Diamond's birth could have marked the beginning of this new generation in the homeworld. That she's not defective, overcooked or off-color, but a result and extreme example of the resource crisis. Yet, I'm inclined to disagree. The easiest thing that points to Era 2 starting post-Rebellion is the updated Diamond Insignia that lacks representation of Pink Diamond, that there was a notable transition period after the war was said and done. Considering how Homeworld and its technology from weapons to vehicles took both the Crystal Gems and Lapis by storm, and they themselves trucked through Pink Diamond's finite existence, I think it's safe to say Era 2 was long after her demise. However, I believe Pink Diamond and her legacy was a prelude into Era 2. Her shortcomings and felt colony exposed all the flaws that made Homeworld so vulnerable, laying the foundation for improvement. Let's backtrack a bit to the Lemon Answers. We've hammered in over and over at this point. Pink Diamond is smaller than Yellow and Blue Diamond, assumably smaller than White Diamond. This was foreshadowed numerous times through the size of her palanquin and chair on her moon base. Not to mention running parallels in her court. The obvious observation is that she's an off-color gem, what Jasper would call an overcooked run. Yet, it's left up in the air if her court was aware of her defects, why her mural, namely the hair, looks so damn different from the real deal, why she appears larger in scale compared to everyone else in Garden's flashback. Things just don't add up, and before anyone says, well, the flashback was Steven's interpretation. Let me ask you, did Steven somehow perfectly interpret Blue Diamond and Blue Pearl in the answer before even seeing Blue's mural a few episodes later? Before even crossing past Blue Pearl in Steven's dream? Not to not that justification, but it only works to a certain extent. Also, doesn't it explain how Steven would picture the silhouettes of gems we haven't seen before, that are certainly going to pop up in the series. Well, to keep up appearances, to still come across as powerful and fierce in her court, what if the diamonds remedied Pink's condition? Yeah, she could have shapeshifted and put on facade, but if Amethyst and Steven are any example, that likely would have exhausted her. It wasn't a permanent fix. She'd had to be modified, or dare I say, enhanced. So they had a few gems at the lab and cooked up a little thing we know today as Lemon Hansers. You already know the drill. This made Pink Diamond larger in scale, boosting her height closer to what's expected of a diamond. This also means Pink's enhancers were larger or stronger than the homeworld standard today. Again, Pink was just a little bit taller than Savani if we go off the moon base in Jungle Moon. So for her to get closer to the proportions of Garnet's flashback, her enhancers couldn't have just added on a few feet like Peridot's. These enhancers made her a total beast, but, but not like the corruption kind of beast. I mean like Blink-182 like guitar solo kind of beast, Shaquille O'Neal kind of beast, you feel? In addition to the colossal height, 
Pink's enhancers may have also been the beginning of gem destabilizers, another notable detail of Garnet's flashback. Perhaps they were built into the enhancers, being produced at will. The destabilizers really confuse me, as they're more or less condensed imitations of Yellow's own destabilization ability. Yet again, I don't think either Pink or Yellow would want Pink to just come across as a knockoff. Maybe these aren't destabilizers and it's a red herring. Or I'm wrong, and Pink was striving to be like her superiors, and the destabilizers were a step in accomplishing this. This was also obviously satisfying to Yellow, as it was a mainstay in Era 2. Also, if Garnet went up against Pink Diamond, who was strapped with the stabilizers, how did she get blindsided against Jasper in the return? I know that's a nitpick, but come on Garnet, even if it had a different function back in the day, which is a possibility, you should have suspected it would have done something. Nevertheless, after Pink shattering, limb enhancers were kept around and refined into what we know them as today. Slimmed down, simplified, yet expanded on, to suit the needs of Bearing gems instead of a single diamond. Homeworld figured, why let this concept go to waste? With the resource crisis and gems coming out smaller and lacking abilities, it only made sense to bust out this accessory. Now, there is one discrepancy that stands in the way of this otherwise marvelous theory checking out. After proving Paradox and catch and release, the gems are taken aback by the revelation that the Lim Enhancers weren't a part of Paradox's actual body. I imagine at least Pearl would have witnessed the actual shattering Pink Diamond, which probably would have included Pink's physical form dissipating, leaving the pieces of the Lim Enhancers behind. So, why didn't she recognize these were Lim Enhancers when poofing Paradox? You can justify this by the idea of a gem's physical form crumbling with the gem shards when they decease before poofing. So the lemon enhancers blended in perfectly. Or Pearl actually wasn't around when Pink was shattered. But until we get more information on both these topics, let's take it with a grain of salt. Which we should take every theory with a grain of salt. But sometimes we forget that when we get so caught up in these exciting ideas. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I'd love to hear yours. Do you think Pink Diamond could have had Lim Enhancers to fool the masses into thinking she's just as tall as Yellow or Blue Diamond? Let us know what you think in the comments below or tweet them to me at Austric Vox or at the Roundtable at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Roundtable Vids. Also, shout out to everyone who came to this conclusion prior to this episode going live. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop with all things Steven. Swing by our store and check out our Steven Universe inspired designs. I hope you have a beautiful day. And Ostrich Vox, signing out. See ya!